and welcome to the MBOM podcast, where you'll learn to master the business of yoga. MBOM is a proud part of the Wander Barn Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Amanda Kingsmith. I'm a 500 hour registered yoga teacher, a yoga business coach, and a total business geek. Here at MBOM, you'll learn everything you need to know to create a sustainable yoga business by learning from myself and guests from around the world about how they built their yoga businesses and about how you too can become a successful yoga teacher, studio owner, and much more. All right, let's dive in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I'm so excited that you've decided to join me for today's episode of the show. This episode is brought to you by Offering Tree. When you're a yoga teacher and you're trying to build your digital presence, it can be daunting, especially right now when you are trying to take your offerings online as fast as possible. Offering Tree set out to make creating your digital presence fun, easy, and affordable. With one account, you can create a website in minutes that has your schedule built right in. They also have email marketing tools to collect email addresses, send newsletters, and automated emails to your subscribers. It all works seamlessly together with one account and one subscription. Forget spending all your time and energy just trying to remember what account does what and what your login information is. On top of that, Offering Tree has an embedded scheduling feature, so if you already have a website that you love, you can use it for online payments and scheduling. They have also just announced that they now have Stripe integrations so that people from Canada, the UK, Australia, and 30 plus countries can accept payments using Offering Tree. This is something that a lot of people has, have been asking for, and it is finally live. So that is super exciting. To learn more, about what Offering Tree can do for your digital presence, visit offeringtree.com forward slash MBOM. Offering Tree has been supporting MBOM for over a year now, and I not only love the product, but I also love the people. And Offering Tree is also providing special pricing for MBOM listeners. So be sure to visit offeringtree.com slash MBOM to receive your discount. All right, today on the podcast, I am very excited to be sharing an episode that I did for my sister podcast, Matcha Mornings. I am so delighted to be joined by Veronica Tai. Veronica has been on MBOM before. She is a fellow yoga teacher, a fellow podcast host, a fellow Albertan. She's also a life coach. And on this special episode of the show, we talk about tools for shifting our mindset when it comes to the COVID-19 global pandemic that we're all currently living in. So it's affecting all of us in various different ways from personal to professional. Maybe you've lost your job or your teaching opportunities. Maybe it's causing other stresses or anxiety in your life. And that's really what Veronica and I sat down to tackle on this episode. We talk about practical mindset shifts that can be made, you know, during this time or during any time where you're feeling extra stress or extra trauma or extra anxiety. And I felt like for me, just recording this episode with Veronica was so therapeutic and I got so much out of it that after I put it out on Matcha Mornings, I felt like I really wanted to share it across this platform as well because I know that there are so many yoga teachers out there listening that maybe have the same fears as me and the same struggles as me and can relate to this. Or perhaps you can just take the tools that Veronica and I use in this episode and apply them to your own things that you have going on in your life. So I hope that you enjoy this episode. And if you do enjoy the episode of Matcha Mornings, please check out Matcha Mornings as its own podcast. You can find it on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts. It's Matcha Mornings with Amanda Kingsmith. And I would love for you to tune in to some of these more holistic health and wellness, hormone-based podcast episodes. If you like the business of yoga, I'm assuming that you probably like just the yoga stuff in general and this podcast, I'm tackling a little bit more of that. So I hope that you enjoy this episode and without further ado, here it is. Hello and welcome to Matcha Mornings, part of the Wander Barn Podcast Network. I'm your host, Amanda Kingsmith, and I'm excited to dive deep on topics around holistic health, the power of food, hormone health, how the practices of yoga can impact our health and well-being, and much more. So grab your cup of tea, settle in, and let's get started. Hello. 
Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Matcha Mornings podcast. I am so grateful that you've decided to join me today for this episode of the show. And today on the podcast, I am very excited to be joined by Veronica Tai. Veronica is a life coach and a yoga instructor. She hosts the Curious Monkey podcast about yoga, spirituality, and wellness. Veronica and I met over three years ago when I was a guest on her podcast, and since then we've been able to meet in person, we've done some desire map work together, we've done some life coaching work together, we've done some business consulting together, we've hiked together, and so much more. And so Veronica is not only a colleague, but she's also a friend of mine, and she's somebody that I really love having these types of conversations about. So her and I hopped on a call to talk about mindset and the subconscious, and particularly around the co COVID-19 global pandemic. For me, I found that the mindset element of it has been one of the most challenging. The mindset for me shifts constantly and I'm constantly working to bring myself back into balance with my mindset. So on this episode of the podcast, you'll hear us talk about Veronica's journey into health and wellness, why she's passionate about life coaching and yoga, And then how we can start to use our mindset to really help us deal with all of the different emotions and feelings and fears and thoughts that are coming up, particularly during this really, really unprecedented time in our history. And of course, this is stuff that you can use at any point in your life or for any situation you have going on. You don't have to feel fear about the pandemic necessarily to be able to use the tips and techniques that we talk about in this episode. And so... You'll hear Veronica take me through a couple of different tips and techniques and tools to help with mindset and the subconscious. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope that it's valuable for you. And without further ado, here's Veronica. Veronica, welcome to the podcast today. I'm super excited to have you here with me. Hi, Amanda. I am so excited to be here with you. Yeah, I am just stoked to chat with you today. You and I talk a lot offline, and we've also had the chance to talk on your podcast, Curious Monkey, as well as my other one, MBOM. And so it's great to have you here on Matcha Mornings today. And my first question for you is, can you introduce yourself to listeners and just tell us where you're located, a little bit about what you do and all that good stuff? Yeah, absolutely. And before I even do that, let me just gush about Matcha Mornings for a little bit. Amanda, I think I've told you this a couple of times already, but honestly, Matcha Mornings is such a cool idea. And I'm a listener of Matcha Mornings as well. I love the um, hormones ones, especially that you do. So I'm just really uh, excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Okay. To my introduction. So hi, everyone. My name is Veronica Tai, and I am a fellow yoga teacher and podcaster, and I'm also a life coach. So I, oh, and I'm a fellow Albertan. So yeah, Amanda, we yeah, have all the things in common. <laughs> I know. Amanda and I have so much in common. So as I look out my window today, today is a good day. The sun is out. There's still snow on the ground, but yesterday it felt like we were in a snow globe. And so, yeah, that's Canadian weather for you. That's, and that's where my whereabouts Amazing. And can you tell me a little bit about, you know, your background, just getting into yoga and then also becoming a life coach? Mm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, It used to be kind of funny when I used to introduce myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, I do yoga. I do podcasting. I do life coaching. And it feels like I do all these things. But when it really comes down to my own journey and what I'm about and what I like to help people about now, it reminds me of that one quote, The journey of yoga is the journey of the self through the self to the self. And essentially, that's how I started, especially my journey of yoga. All I knew was that I like this thing called yoga. I tried it out in 2016. It was hot yoga. Of course it was, right? Um, back then, that was kind of like the, cra- uh, the craze out there. It was mm-hmm. Moksha and Bikram. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, this hot yoga thing. They say it burns 700 calories. I thought it was the best thing ever. But there was something more to this yoga life that I enjoyed. And I I carried that with me for, oh gosh, I said 2006. So that must've been about 10 years before I made the decision. And it felt like as if it was on a whim, it was just that I didn't really enjoy the job that I was in. I was, I'm a seeker and I was seeking and I wanted to find my purpose and want, I wanted to feel so much more fulfilled uh, than I was being between four walls with a computer screen in front of me at an office. Like that just 
wasn't for me. And so it was almost on a whim where I kind of like jokingly said, maybe I should become a yoga teacher or something. And you know, sometimes when you make a joke out of something, but there's like this um, ring of truth that comes through, that's exactly how it felt. And it just happened that the yoga teacher that I loved who taught at our office was part of a studio that was putting out their yoga teacher training for the first time ever. And so I took my yoga teacher training and I always, I kind of count myself as like pre yoga teacher training and after yoga post yoga teacher training, because I came out a completely different person or more rather, I should say I came out more me than I had ever been. And I realized that I was living as a completely different person prior to, like, I just wasn't living true to myself. I wasn't living the life that I truly wanted. So that was my path of yoga, which is a continuous journey. And for the rest of my life, I'll be on the path of yoga. Then I started to feel the call to not only teach yoga, but to also help people. I really wanted to help seekers live unbound as their fullest selves because I had a taste of what that was like. And I was like, yes, yes, there is like no reason why we should not live in this type of joy. Like, I don't understand how we can, we can live bound which I know I, I should have said not understand. Of course I understand. That's kind of the society and culture that we live in. We live in a society and culture of expectations and boxes. So anyways, that's when life coaching came into the picture. And there's a whole story about that, but perhaps I'll let that kind of come through as we continue on our conversation. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. And I just find your story. I mean, it's so similar to mine in in a lot of ways, like coming from a corporate job and just continuing to go down a path of looking for like more and more of what really serves you and then how you can serve others with that. So it's really, really incredible to hear that. And one of the things that I find just amazing about the work that you do is being able to help people on the life coaching side of things. And one of the things that from us working together, you've really helped me with has been, you know, my mindset. And so, you know, right now, if people are listening currently, I mean, we're in this crazy global pandemic, which is just totally weird time to be alive. And for me, one of the things that's been really, I think, interesting and also challenging has just been the different like roller coaster waves of mindset. So I was wondering if we could dive a little bit into the mindset side of things when it comes to, you know, like our mind, body, spirit connection, our mind is so important with that. And then also diving into a little bit more of what you know about the subconscious mind. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. The voices in our heads. I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> I used to you think definitely that I, was, are not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think that I was the only one, but now I know I'm not the only one. Everybody has a voice in their heads and I don't, okay. I'm going to stay on, um, I'm going to stay on topic. So, uh, <laughs> one thing that I've learned about myself via coaching is that I am, I, I also learned a new word. I'm verbose. So I tell Ooh, a lot I of like stories. That word. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it really makes sense. Of course I'm verbose because I'm also Vata. So my Vata nature comes out, especially around these topics where I'm like, oh my gosh, shiny things all over the place. There's so much to say when it comes to mindset, but Let me start simply. Let me start with just one thing. No matter what it is that we're going through, it's all about mindset. No matter what it is that we're trying to achieve, no matter what it is that we're trying to um, create or try out or form into real reality, it's all about the mindset. And mindset is... I think it's pretty like self-explanatory when you hear mindset, but when you really look into mindset and all that it entails, and you already know this, Amanda, because you said it's mind, body, and spirit. It's almost like a big umbrella that encompasses all of it. So I think that when most people think about mindset, they think about affirmations and they think about like think positively. Let's do this. Um, Don't say you, although that's one of my favorite quotes. My favorite quotes is whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, 
you're right. And that's Henry Ford's quote. And I live by it every single day because when we're in this world of creating, and I, I think you'll relate to this too, Amanda, like every damn day, you have to remind yourself that you can. Like every damn day, there's going to be a thought in your head that tells you why you can't do this. And I mm -hmm. think these thoughts, uh, whether we call it fear or the lizard brain or our inner critic, these thoughts are amplified, especially in a state of uncertainty as we are right now. And it makes sense because these thoughts are here as a protective mechanism. These thoughts are archaic and that's why we call it our lizard brain or our reptilian brain. It's kind of like the most archaic part of ourselves that cares just about survival. Like it doesn't matter about your dreams or ambitions. It just wants you safe. So at the end of the day, these thoughts are coming through kind of like tr in, in its own twisted way, trying to protect you. So when it comes to mindset on the surface level, I was saying it sounds like as if it's just about affirmations, like I can do it. Think positive. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. What if I lose my job? Don't worry. You won't lose your job. I believe I won't lose my job. Oh my gosh. Like that used to kill me. And I think it was one of the hardest parts in uh, wrapping my head around this self-help world where I'm like, are you joking me? Like, if that's how you do it, then I feel that I would be so far ahead by now. Like, if all we need to do is just say the opposite of what it is that we don't want. And sometimes, yeah, that's all it is. It's just simply about choosing the better belief, choosing the better thought. But other times, it might just be the case that we are um, blocked toward those thoughts. So you can, you know what the opposite of, I might lose my job is the opposite is, well, I might not lose my job. Both are correct. But why is it that we gravitate toward the one that scares us the most? I might lose my job. Um, I might not make the sale. Uh, what else might be going on? Like, oh, mine. Oh my goodness. Mine is, I have to do everything at once. Like everything has to be done now. The opposite of those, even though they do feel better, I don't have to get everything done now. You might not lose your job. And hey, you are going to make that sale. It's so much, it feels better. Your body, do you feel that when you when you hear the difference between the two, Amanda? Like yeah, how, yeah, there's a contraction when you're thinking in the negative and there's this expansion in the positive. Yeah, I actually felt myself like physically relax a little bit at the second ones because I think that, you know, particularly right now, like I don't really personally live day to day feeling this fear of losing my job because I work for myself. So, um, but in the current state, I mean, there's definitely those things that trickle in, like what if people can't afford to do yoga anymore? Like that is a real concern. I feel like at this point or, you know, looking a couple minutes down or a couple months down the road um, and doing the opposite, I felt like my, my shoulders come down a little bit and just a little bit of the tension leave. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. What if people don't want to go to yoga anymore? Ah, that's so scary. So that's kind of your first um, body connection. That's level one. That's layer one. That's your body connection, especially in extreme cases, like the ones that I um, shared, like you can feel it. There's this relaxing when it's the thought that feels good. There's this contracting when it's the thought that feels stressful and bad. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're really just one thought away. We're just really one thought away from bliss and happiness. That's all it is. Byron Katie, uh, who is just this wonderful, enlightened being, teaches this method called the work. And it's just four steps. And she is somebody who lived through depression for like 10 years. Like for 10 years, she was like severely depressed. Um, she had anxiety. She had agoraphobia. That's the phobia where you can't leave your house. She felt so unworthy, so unworthy that she would actually, as the story goes, like sleep on the floor by the cockroaches because she wasn't at home. She actually had to go to a women's clinic or something, um, kind of like a rehab kind of thing for her. So it was actually one day, like this one pivotal thought dawned on her, dawned on her that led to her enlightenment. She realized that, hey, 
when she thinks the painful thought, she's depressed and anxious and everything sucks. And then when she doesn't think the painful thought, everything's fine. That's it. And it, it's always the most simple concepts that are the most profound. But as I always say, simple doesn't necessarily mean easy. So the first layer is to connect to your body because your body has messages for you that your brain will not be able to uh, comprehend in that the brain is the logical part and it processes 11 million bits of information per second. But your body, your heart, and your gut brain, they process 40 million bits of information per second. There's so much going on there. And there's this, and that's the, that's the uh, birthplace of our emotions and our feelings. That's where we feel them in our bodies. So if we're ignoring this massive messenger that we have, and we're only living in the brain portion of our heads, then we're missing a lot of messages that are being sent to us. Feel into your body. With every, I know it's going to, it's going to feel crazy at first. Your ego may not like it, but feel into your body with every scary thought that you have. And then you can start to feel into whether if it's a lie, if it's a lie, it feels bad. That's, it's as simple as that. If it's a lie, it feels bad and it causes you grief. And if it's truth, it feels expansive, like freedom. And so by checking into your body in the first place, contraction or expansion, you're able to gauge where you're at with your thoughts, your mindset. And then step two, if possible, you choose the better thought. Like what if people will never want to go to yoga again? And the better thought to that for myself anyways, because that's also a real fear of mine is like, well, they can't not never want yoga. Maybe it just looks a little bit different. So that's a better thought. And I can feel myself expanding when I think that. And maybe that's where I'm, um, I, I just want to say, I want to be realistic about this because I think it gets really realistic and this whole uh, tool is rejected when you go too far out, like to the point where you cannot believe the thought. So if we go from, let's say, what if people never want to come back to yoga again? And you're like, no, let's choose a super positive thought. Let's think, no, when the world like gets back to normal working order, every single human is going to want to do yoga again because it's so great. Everybody's going to go and everything's going to be like even better than before. That yeah. If that works for you and you can believe it, go for it. But like, yeah, let me test it out on you, Amanda. How does that okay. feel for you when I say that? So I think it feels like it feels good. And I think that in some ways there's definitely the ability for me to feel like that is true. Like I think that, and even what you said before about like, you know, kind of the opposite to what I said, where I'm like, oh, the fear is like, what if people don't want to do yoga? And it's like, mm -hmm. well, what if people do want to keep going yoga, going to yoga? And I think that that resonates with me a lot as well as like, you know, after the world gets into working order, lots of people are going to want to do yoga. Both of those feel mm -hmm. very true. And I think that for the most part, especially in this situation, I'm very able to kind of channel that and be like, okay, how mm -hmm. can I support the yoga teachers in my network and the studios that I work for? Like what work can I do now to make sure that that is true and that that is the case? Mm -hmm. but then I just feel like there's like those other moments. And I think this is true of all times in life. There's those other moments where you wake up and you're just like, I just don't I just want to bury my head in this pillow and not face the world. Or I just want to be on Netflix all day and you know, just yes. watch Tiger King or Love is Blind or something oh like gosh, that. Yeah. <laughs> like nothing quality, you know, like it's got to be something trashy. <laughs> Although on a, on a sidebar, I do find Tiger King pretty inspiring. If this man can make waves doing what he does, it's almost like, well, then we better the hell be able to make waves doing what we do. Because like what <laughs> we're trying to do is actually to like 
help the world and make it a more positive place. Like, come on, like good has to win. It's got to work. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I love that. You fully just like mindsetted that. (laughs) That's amazing. Exactly. (laughs) Yes. And so Amanda, you, okay. Number one, that's pretty cool that you can go all the way to the extreme. Um, Let me finish the point with the extreme first. And then you actually utilized one of the tools already, which is so amazing. We'll go a little bit further with that afterward, just so that listeners can apply it to themselves. Okay. Okay. So going to the extreme thoughts where for me, I actually, actually, I can, I can see it. Okay. Let's use one where I can't see it even. Okay. How about this for me to be like, okay, so I have this fear of like, what if, (laughs) I don't know this one. Okay. This one's a pretty real super vulnerable fear. So my fear is what if I don't have kids in time? Yeah. Family planning. It's been on my mind because I'm in my thirties now and the biological time clock is real. I wish it wasn't, but it is. So it's almost like, well, what if I don't have kids in time? Because there's so much life that I want to live. There's so much traveling. There's so much creating that I want to be doing. And I feel that if I have kids, see, so super vulnerable right now, but um, I feel like if I have kids, like just in my mind, whether it be true or not, just in my mind, it's like, then I have to give everything up because that's what being a mother is. Like then I'd have to give everything up and I'd have to change my entire identity. And then who am I? Mm -hmm. So you see how I'm going down in this downhill spiral right now. You only need to choose something that makes you feel a little bit better. And then you begin to believe more thoughts that make you feel better. So I right now can jump to, no, I don't. No, I don't have to give that up because I have people in my life, like like pretty kick-ass women in my life and also on the online business world that are doing it all. And I'm like, no, they can do it. Like they're an example. And that's where I can go. Um, if I try to shoot straight for the moon, the moon being oh my goodness, don't you even worry. My life is not going to change one bit if I, if I, should I choose to start a family? Like I will have to give up absolutely nothing. In fact, it'll be even better and I'm going to have even more time somehow. I can't believe that. That's too, that's too far out. And for um, some of you, especially if um, some of your listeners are empaths, you can feel the shift in my energy as I say that. Mm-hmm. One has this kind of substantial ring to it. It's true. I, I actually believe it. And then the other, it's I shot for the moon and I kind of detach from what the thought even is or what the belief even is. And so the point here is play around with these thoughts in your body. You don't have to go straight for the moon. You don't have to go from, oh my gosh, like what if I lose my job and then I'm going to have to eat food like cans of beans and then I'm going to get evicted from my apartment and then who will I, and then I'll just like live in trash cans with cats. Somehow my scenarios <laughs> always end up in trash cans with cats. Like it's it like happens. your worst nightmare or something like that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <Honestly>. <laughs> Apparently. So it, so you don't have to go from that mindset to like, no, I'm going to start my own business. It's going to be a multi-billion dollar empire and it's going to be perfect. And I can do everything right now. No, you just have to up-level yourself one notch. Like what's something better? So maybe you get evicted from your apartment, but you don't live in the trash can with cats. Maybe you end up couch surfing with friends and it's like, oh, Okay, that's a little bit better. And then when you're able to entertain that next level thought after that, then maybe, wait a minute, maybe you don't get evicted from your apartment at all because you know what? You can always go work at a Starbucks and it's gonna be okay. Oh, okay. Now your next worst thing is working at a Starbucks and so on and so forth. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, totally. And I feel like that feels really accessible too. I'm just thinking about where my mindset's been currently. And I think that maybe I've been flipping like more between the extremes of like, okay, how can I like come out of this on top? And then the the next moment or the next day, it's like, oh my gosh, like I'm not going to have a home and I'm not going to have any money. (laughs) Essentially the trash cans with cats, although I didn't think that directly, but you know, similar mindset. And it's, yeah, I I love the idea of just thinking like, 
okay, if there's fear about, you know, not making enough money or maybe losing a job, maybe it's just shifting a little bit to, you know, the one step up, like the, what if people do want to still continue to practice yoga? Cause that feels a lot more like tangible and realistic than like, you know, how can I come out of this on top? Cause it's just hard to know, like, what even is that? It just feels so unreachable mm-hmm. right now. <laughs> Yeah. And I can even feel the pressure, like the expectation of, of the, of the latter thought. Yeah, Mm -hmm. totally. So see, it's all, it's, you're only one thought away from feeling better and it's all about the mindset. So tie that, tying that back to your body, feel that in your body. Again, anything that feels expansive and open is true for you. Anything that feels contracting uh, is not, you're not quite there. So even with these thoughts, and even if it's a really good thought, like, yeah, I'm going to come out on top, like <laughs> that kind of contracts in me too. So clearly I don't fully believe that either <laughs> in myself. So, and that's not a bad thing. You just go and look for the one that feels a little more expansive, a little more open, a little more like freedom to you. And you work everything in steps, everything in levels, just like we peel back to the connection to our truths layer by layer, the whole onion example Everything else that you do is layer by layer, step by step. You don't have to shoot straight for the moon. And in fact, when you do take it layer by layer, step by step, you're going to get way closer to the moon than just standing at the starting point, all like a little scared to start at all. So that's the one thing. Change your thought, follow what your body feels. And then if you want to get a little bit deeper, especially if it's like a particularly sticky thought and it's um it's really hard for you to wrap your head around where you're like no like I'm convinced I'm I'm almost totally convinced that nobody's gonna want to do yoga nobody's gonna want to do yoga nobody's gonna do yoga nobody's gonna want to do yoga every time you think that thought your brain is creating the same brain connection um what Fires together, wires together. We're talking about the neuron, the synapses of your brain. Every time you have that thought, imagine two pieces of electrical um, wires, like tapping together, tapping together, tapping together. And not only that, a piece of saran wrap gets wrapped around it. And again, and again, and again, until you've got like this big wad of saran wrap reinforcing these two electrical wires. That's what we're doing when we think a thought over and over and over again. Um, Or another example is another analogy, if you prefer, is like a rut, like kind of driving on the same, you know, if you drive on the same path over and over, you create a Mm -hmm. rut, right? So you can, yeah. So when we're trying to change a thought, you can, you can imagine using that rut example, how hard it might be to like turn left or turn right. Like you're in the rut, like it's playing over and over. So you're going to have to, if you want to turn right, you got to turn right, got to turn right, turn right turn right until finally you get a little bit of um, traction and you can go right and then you create a new pathway. So in order to do that, when it comes to our thoughts, what you did was perfect, Amanda. I, I don't even know that you realize that you did it. You just turn it around to the opposite. People are not going to want to do yoga after this. Well, what if people do want to do yoga after this? Then to go even further with that, you do, this is Byron, I'm borrowing from Byron Katie's The Work, you do and simplifying it. So you do three examples or reasons why it might be true. So let's do it right here. So Amanda, what are three reasons or examples why it might be true that um, people will want to do yoga after this? Yeah. So I think that one would be people are going to be seeking community. I mean, people are already seeking community, especially with, especially with all the social distancing and the fact that we're so far apart from one another. So I think that particularly once we can be in person again, there's going to be a huge desire for community. Um, two, I think that, I mean, like you and I, I think that we both understand how yoga makes us feel. And even for me, I've really felt like the days where I've lost my yoga practice through this and just throughout my life in general are the days where I feel, I guess, like the worst in my body, my mind, my spirit, all that sort of stuff. And so I think that like the yoga kind of speaks for itself. And I think that people who practice yoga feel something like, even if they don't know the actual benefits from the science side of things, they feel that there's something there. And I think that trusting that 
you know, the yoga is not going to stop working regardless of what happens in the world. People are still going to want that feeling. So I think Mm -hmm. that's the second one. And then I think the third would be maybe similar to that, but people, you know, people want to exercise, like there's still going to be a desire for movement. So if it's not like the mental benefits that they're coming for, I think that there's definitely going to be, people are going to want to do group exercise again. Hey everyone, we're taking a quick break from the podcast to talk about Muse. Muse tracks your brain during meditation to give you real-time feedback on your meditation, guiding you into the zone and solving the major problem that most of us have when starting a meditation practice. Muse lets you know when you're doing it right. Your Muse headband basically acts like your personal assistant. While you meditate, Muse measures whether your mind is calm or active and translates that data into sounds. When you're calm, you'll hear peaceful sounds. And when your mind wanders, the sounds will intensify, guiding you back to a calm state. So if you're like me, where you have a really solid meditation practice and you love to do it every day or every couple of days, but sometimes you just find that you really can't get in the rhythm because your mind is so busy, Muse might be for you. The best part about this is that I have a 15% discount off just for listeners of Matcha Mornings. So head on over to bit.ly forward slash Matcha Mornings Muse to get your discount. All right, back to the episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's all true. That's all true. Absolutely. Um, and then you do it. And then you pull this tool out every time you go into the dip. And rather than, again, shooting for the moon or like imagining that you just snap those electrical wires like open, no, it's more of a process. Um, Like the car in the rut. So many analogies flying around now. Sorry. (laughs) But I love it. You know, I love a good analogy. (laughs) I know. I feel like all I do is talk in analogies and metaphors. So, like the car in the rut, you don't just turn once and off you go into the sunset. No, you turn right, you turn right, you turn right. And it's a process. So you're going to feel better after you do the turnaround and you think about three reasons why the opposite is true. And then you go on with life because you feel better. And the next time you fall back into the rut of like, oh my God, nobody's going to want to do yoga. You whip it out again and you come back up with three more reasons why this, why the opposite might be true. Like, why is it again that people might want to be doing yoga after all this is over? So, yeah. So you keep going with that. Um, What do we talk about now? We talked about the body connection. We talked about getting through sticky thoughts. Uh, Sometimes they are sticky and, and that's the car in the rut. And then Oh, let's talk about the answers. This is going to be so interesting and so much fun. Um, I find it interesting and so much fun. So oh, where do we even start? Um, there's the, I think maybe your listeners know this already, but uh, just to reiterate, we have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. If you guys have ever seen the picture depicting the conscious mind and subconscious mind, uh, there are plenty out there, but my favorite, and I learned this in psychology class, like psych psych 101 in university, it's like an iceberg. And you see the tip of the iceberg in the photo. There's like the water. And then underneath the water is like this big, super, super big chunk of iceberg. Like that's the rest of the iceberg. The tip of the iceberg, which is like five to 10% of the iceberg is your conscious mind. Your conscious mind is your waking conscious mind. The one that helps you talk and think and analyze and be linear and logical. And that's my conscious brain working right now as I'm speaking to you, Amanda, on this podcast. Mm -hmm. And then beneath the water's surface, the rest of it, the rest of the 90 to 95% of it, that is your subconscious mind. 
Your subconscious mind is a collection of all of the experiences and emotions and feelings that you've had throughout your whole entire life. It's nonlinear. So there's no timeline with it. It doesn't think in past, present, or future. And it thinks more in wholes rather than in parts. And it's very, uh, it's a very emotional piece. So we may liken the subconscious mind to our intuition. And when you're thinking about the brain, um, one, one, conceptualization is that the left brain is the conscious mind because the left brain is what processes language and analyzes and focuses and choice. And then the right brain, which is much more creative and intuitive, that represents the subconscious mind. Again, in which there is no linear thinking. And I don't want to get too deep into this, but just to kind of drive the point home about nonlinear thinking, when we talk about the inner child and how there is a many, not a, there are many small parts of ourselves that live within us now. Um, In other words, what, like if something traumatic and trauma simply means something that happened to you that you did not have the emotional capacity to process. It could be something more serious, or it could simply be your teacher yelling at you for talking too much. And then in your, (laughs) like, yeah, in your like little innocent seven-year-old brain, you're like, Oh, I will never speak again. And it's actually really hard for you to speak up in meetings or to raise your hand to even ask a question. Mm -hmm. Like from that moment on, the nonlinear thinking part, the subconscious part is the reason why these habits stay with, not, I wouldn't even call them habits, why these tendencies tend to stay with us. So there is, again, five to 10% is your conscious brain, like 90 to 95% is your subconscious mind. There's so much going on in your emotional and belief system. Tying it back to the pandemic and everything that we're experiencing right now, it's, oh, and also you can't, you can't really fix your subconscious tendencies with a conscious mind. You can't okay. just think your way out of it. So right. for example, going back to that hand raising issue, like you can't just think, I'll just like, I'll just raise my hand. Like I'll just do it and everything's going to be Okay. If that were the case, it it would be pretty easy to like kind of break it. You just have to get over that hump. But sometimes things are so um, ingrained in us and so wired and programmed into us that it almost, it feels like death. If you were to raise your hand to speak up, it feels like death and you actually cannot do it. So you can't think your way out of it. You can't think your way out of it. So you need to speak the same language as the subconscious mind. And oftentimes uh, going with a metaphor. So this works out for us because we love speaking in analogies. So going, <laughs> yeah. so going with a metaphor is going to tap into the right side, the more creative part of your brain. So how we can apply this to situations that we might be experiencing in this pandemic is if you have a... Um, emotional reaction that you just can't make sense of. It might be that it's not meant for you to make sense of. You need to meet it at its subconscious level, the metaphor level. Uh, Amanda, do you have any, like, do you have any straight, like difficult feelings or emotions that come up? Mm, That's a good question. I'm sure that there's lots. (laughs) Yeah, there's definitely some. Let me see if I can narrow in on one. I feel like the the biggest challenge has been like going back and forth between like feeling like things will be fine and then feeling like the world's going to end. And I think that mm. one of the things that's been most challenging for me has been the uncertainty, like, you know, how long are we doing this for? I definitely work better. Like if somebody could be like, okay, June 30th, like the world will be normal again. You can go outside. I'd be like, okay, let's do this. I'm good. I can go till June 30th. I can even go till September. It's the fact that we have no idea that I think is the most challenging for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And when you think about that, what kind of body sensations arise for you? Like this uncertainty, what does it feel like? I mean, I just like felt it in my body. Like it makes my heart pick up a little bit. It makes my like stomach feel a little uneasy. 
it gives me like kind of a sense of shortness of breath, which is sort of ironic because that's one of the like main symptoms of the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So and that makes me feel stressed. So there's a lot of like, I think stress that kind of yeah. comes with that. Like the, yeah, the tightness in my chest, the tightness in my belly and just like the tension. As yeah. Well. So let's call it like this tightening tension feeling. It sounds good. Is that, yeah. Does that resonate? Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's call it this tightening tension feeling. So we're already starting to use our imagination and we're creating this kind of, um, separation between you and the feeling. Now it's a different entity and try this on for size, become that tightening tension feeling like let it get as big as it wants to until it completely takes over you and you become the tightening tension feeling let me know when you're here okay I think I got it okay Tightening tension feeling. Hello. 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 Give me three words to describe yourself. Uh, Tight comes to mind. (laughs) Tight or like solid. Mm -hmm. Rough. Yeah. Tight, solid, and rough. Yeah. So allow yourself to be tight tension feeling. Amanda is no longer here for now. You are now tight tension feeling. Tight tension feeling, why are you here? Mm, Protection. Yeah. What are you protecting? It's protecting the vulnerable aspects of, I want to say myself, but Amanda. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Amanda. Yeah. And why does Amanda need protecting? That's a good question. Feels like a human instinct, like I have to protect. And also that's a, a scary time. There's a you know, virus going around and then all the other side effects of it. Mm-hmm. Well, tight tension feeling. What message do you have for Amanda? What does she need to know? Hmm, That's a good question. That tight tension feeling doesn't need to be there for her to be protected. Okay. Are you, yeah. Are you tight tension feeling right now or are you Amanda right now? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe a mixture of both. (laughs) mixture of both. Okay. It's yeah. hard to, it's hard to or, know. It's hard to disconnect like from yourself. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Amanda, come back for a second. We'll try something different. We'll try something else. So, mm-hmm. and that's okay. See, and, and that's totally okay. Um, I think becoming the actual feeling or becoming the actual thing is a really great play on imagination. It really gets you straight into the right brain, the subconscious side of you right away, but Hey, it might not work for everyone. And that's okay. There's another way around it, which I think is kind of lucky because now I get to show you another tool. So look around your room right now and just let me know what kind of uh, what kind of object or whatever it is that sticks out to you? <laughs> it's very messy right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let me see. Um, there's a book that I'm reading right now called Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. And it's got a like a piggy bank on the front. And so the piggy bank is pink. And then the book is blue and green. So I feel like that really catches my eye. Okay. Blue and green. So... All of this, and I don't think I mentioned it before, just in case listeners want to go like um, look for more resources. I trained with Martha Beck in her Wayfinder Life Training Coaching uh, or Life Coaching Training. And Martha Beck is like huge on being on the right-hand side of the brain. That's actually why I chose to go for 
her uh, training in itself because I know that it's not just a matter of thinking your way out of something. There's something more to it. There's a deeper layer. And one thing that she says often, which I love because I think it's so true, is that as humans, we love solving puzzles. We love solving puzzles and we love thinking about things in metaphors, which I think I just proved earlier by like throwing three at you guys for like one, (laughs) one thing. (laughs) Yeah, we really, really do. So to meet the right brain, the subconscious side where it is, let's think in metaphors. When it comes to this feeling, this very uncomfortable feeling of uncertainty, how is it like your book, Profit First? Ooh, that's a good question. Okay. I think that maybe the feeling of uncertainty is similar to the book because I don't know how the book ends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, I mean, it's talking about a fini- I, like a way of doing your finances in your business that I'm like pretty unfamiliar with. So I feel like that has like a level of uncertainty too. Nice. Notice another thing in your in your room that catches your eye. Anything? Yep. Anything. Okay. I'm looking around at all the objects. Um, okay. I have a Starbucks mug that's from, it's like one of those places you've been, like yeah. been there series and it's from South Carolina and it's the whole mug has like little images of things from South Carolina and it's like white with pink and red and yellow. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So how is this Starbucks mug like dealing with uncertainty? The Starbucks mug is like dealing with uncertainty because um, I don't know what will happen to the mug in the future. Yeah. And? And I don't know. I mean, I don't know what will happen to South Carolina in the future. Okay. And South Carolina. Yeah. Let's stick with these two examples um, for the, for the interest of time. So let's keep going with the Starbucks mug. Uh, The Starbucks mug is like being in uncertainty because you don't know what will happen to it in the future. And you don't know what South Carolina will be like in the future. And how do you deal with this uncertainty of not knowing what's going to happen to your Starbucks mug? It's kind of interesting because I've never thought about it before. I like, I mean, I could drop it walking down the stairs after this call as I take it to the dishwasher and it could break and then I wouldn't have the mug anymore. Or I mean, it could get like ruined in the dishwasher or yeah, I mean, it kind of like lives in a box when we're not in Canada. So at any point it could get like lost amongst other stuff or misplaced or end up somewhere that I never see it again. And it doesn't really make me feel like super stressed. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a mug, right? Like it doesn't really matter. Like I like it, but I'm not like that attached to it. Yeah. And so how can you take this metaphor that you created into your current situation with uncertainty of what's going on in the world? What relationships do you see there? Yeah, I think it's maybe having like a trust that everything will be okay. I guess you could say like, I trust that my life will be okay, whether or not I have like the South Carolina mug in it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like applying the same trust to like, I trust I would be okay if people stop practicing yoga or I trust that I'll be okay, you know, regardless of what happens in the next couple months with the pandemic, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love it so much. So with your uh, Starbucks mug, it's kind of like you can, you can do your best to keep it stored away. Maybe not in the middle of the hallway where someone will definitely kick it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And then you just have trust that it, it's going to be fine. And if it's not, it breaks. And then actually let's keep going with that. If it's not and your Starbucks mug breaks, then what? I mean, I think I would be like sad for a minute because it's really pretty and I bought it when I was down there for a period of time. So that's why it's special to me. But I mean, life would go on without the Starbucks mug <laughs> for sure. 
I mean, I, I would just pick up the pieces and put them in a little baggie so that it was safe for me to like recycle or put them in the garbage or whatever. And then, I mean, I would continue on my day. I probably wouldn't even like really mourn the loss of the Starbucks mug. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then you move on with your day and everything will be okay. And applying that same concept into your present day dilemma, which is the uncertainty. How can you apply this? How can I do that? I think it's like applying the same concept. It seems so much harder though, when it's something that's like much less tangible and also something that feels like much more close to me. But I think it's just the idea of, I guess, maybe not being attached to anything that we have like in our lives and trusting that we'll be okay without certain things. Like we'll be okay without, you know, the current job we have or be okay with a different car or, you know, anything like that. Be okay without it. Yeah. Um, Maybe even just tying it back to one of the earlier, so many, yeah. Like I've never had a shortage of like neurotic thoughts or fears. (laughs) Like I feel like I've got, it's abundant. (laughs) So abundant. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, tying it back to an earlier thought that we had, which is what if nobody wants to do yoga again? And applying this concept to it, like what if we come out of this pandemic and for you specifically, Amanda, nobody Mm -hmm. wants to do yoga again. Then what do you do? Like the mug broke. I guess I like pick up the pieces of my life and continue on. I think like, you know, if nobody wants to do yoga, I guess I find a different thing to do as a career or I mean, I guess another way to think about it is if nobody wants to do yoga, perhaps that's my opportunity to educate them on why they might want to do yoga. Ooh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The uh, terrain may change, but you'll be able to pivot and navigate through it either way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That was so good. Yeah, that was so good. So we have gotten progressively... uh, intermediate. I don't want to say intermediate because it's not like level one, level three. You don't have to like master one of these tools before you move on to the next, but it gets into the deeper layers. So Mm -hmm. we've progressively got into the deeper layers of our psyche, of our mindset so that we can adjust our mindset from simply noticing what the thought that's causing you grief is, that's making your body like go crazy to changing your belief about that thought to getting into the same level as your subconscious mind. Like if it's really sticky, getting onto the same level as your subconscious mind and then kind of like massaging it there. Um, Those are all like, these are all tools that we can apply to ourselves. And all you need is yourself, a journal, and you already have the instructions because you listen to this podcast, like, and then off you go. Like you can start to step-by-step, layer-by-layer, reshape your mindset so that you are able to sit in peace. Like at the end of the day, that's really what we want. We want to be in peace. We want to be happy. Okay, I'll throw another one out there because it's something, I just feel like it's such a good anchor Mm -hmm. Um, because I said at the end of the day, all we want is peace and all we want is happiness, which reminds me, duh, at the end of the day, all we really want is a feeling, a certain feeling. And that's the whole desire map stuff. So to anchor yourself, you can even call out the way that you want to feel, you know, going back to like thinking the better thought, thinking the feeling that's going to thinking the belief that's going to make you feel better. Um, it's almost like, well, how do you want to feel right? Cause you're sitting here feeling like crap, thinking that you're going to live in a garbage can with cats and like <laughs> anxious and scared and your heart palpates like, Oh my goodness. Like, Holy cow. That's so much stress. And, and then it's like, well, how do you want to feel? Um, or when we're talking about like, let's say that that's the feeling of uncertainty, right? So it's like, well, I want to feel secure. I want to feel safe. I want to feel certain. I want to feel, um, maybe taken care of. I want to feel open and like brave. And then you choose the one that sticks out to you the most. And when I'm thinking about, because I'm in this, I'm in this spiral a lot. When I'm thinking about living in a garbage with cats, like, 
<laughs> what I really, what I really want to feel actually is courageous. I know you wouldn't think it, but like at the end of the day, it's not really safety or certainty. I want to feel courageous. I want to know that I was courageous enough to step up and not let myself be in a situation where I'm living in a garbage with cats. So then you reach for that feeling because at the end of the day, if that's what I'm wanting, I want courage, courageous. Why wait for a situation in which I have to show courage? Why not find situations now in which I can feel courage? And same with uncertainty. Perhaps if someone's feeling uncertain right now, what they do want to feel is comfort, right? Maybe it's like they want to feel comfort. They want to feel secure. And then you reach for the thing that's going to help you feel comfort and what's going to feel secure. It could be simply spending five extra time, five extra minutes with your family. It could simply be cuddling with your dog who gives you like, if I had a dog, I, I feel like they would give me that feeling. Um, I have contemplated like getting a dog during this. Just so hard. That. Oh my God. I was just on positive match um, and arc website yesterday. <laughs> Yes, I'm on the same page. I love it. (laughs) But yeah, so that's kind of like the last last tool that I'd like to share where it's reach for the feeling, not the thing. So reach for the feeling because there is already something in your life that can help you bring forth that feeling into form. And as the snowball effect goes, the more you feel that way, the more reasons you're going to be given to feel that way. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing all of that with myself and with listeners. And I hope that everyone got a lot out of that. I know personally for me being able to go through that, I feel, you know, way better than I did at the beginning of this conversation, which is just a testament to all those tools. And I know you also offer one-on-ones as well as packages for life coaching and consultations. Can you share with people where they can go to find that? And then also where they can just go to find you in general, if they want to follow along with your journey or with everything that you put out to the world? Oh my gosh. Absolutely. In fact, I actually have an eight week coaching program coming up and it's especially for this situation that we're in, um, specifically for people who were just about, like you were just about to make a change in your life and you're like, this is it. I'm going to do it. And then bam, pandemic. So, and I know there's a lot of, um, thoughts and fears around that. So if you're interested in the eight week coaching program, you can go to my website, veronicatai.com forward slash eight, eight week coaching. Otherwise there's still tons of great resources and content for you on my website, veronicatai.com, including uh, the podcast curious Spunky, in which Amanda has also been featured in. You can also follow me on Instagram at curious monkey. It's M O N K I. Amazing. Thank you so much. I'll make sure there's links for all of that. And just thank you again for this conversation. It's been amazing being able to have this and to share this resources resource with other people out there listening. Yeah. It is always such a good time chatting with you, Amanda, and you're just so wonderful for putting all of this type of information out. Thank you so much for doing what you do. Oh, absolutely. All right, friends, I hope that you enjoyed that episode of the podcast with Veronica Tai. And hopefully if you're feeling any fears or doubts or worries or any feelings during this global pandemic that we're in right now, hopefully this the tools and techniques that we talked about in today's episode will be helpful for you. For me, I had a lot of clarity after recording this podcast episode. Really, Veronica showcased those tools by coaching me a little bit, and it was really helpful to be able to experience the shifts in my mindset, the way it felt in my body and in my breath and all of that stuff. So I would really recommend it. And even if you are listening to this later on and the global pandemic has passed, these are tools that you can use for any different type of feeling or life situation. So I hope that you got value out of this episode. As always, you can find links and notes on the show notes page at wanderbarn.com. This one will be wanderbarn.com forward slash Veronica. And do make sure that you reach out to her if you feel like life coaching or working with her and her group coaching program would be beneficial. I've worked with her for a couple of years and she's so awesome. So I'm so glad that you guys got to hear a little bit of her on the podcast today. And as always, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next week. 
Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Matcha Mornings. To find links mentioned in this episode, show notes, photos, and more, head on over to wanderbarn.com forward slash podcast slash matcha dash mornings. To be the first to know about brand new episodes of Matcha Mornings, subscribe on your podcast app. If you enjoyed this episode of the show, please leave a review or send me an email at wanderbarn at gmail.com with the subject line Matcha Mornings. To follow along with me, Amanda Kingsmith, you can find me on Instagram at Amanda Kingsmith to learn more about other fun projects I'm working on. To find more great podcasts like this one on topics such as travel, the business of yoga, cryptocurrency, and more, head on over to wanderbarn.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you soon.